prostitutes, but then you also, in that same deal, are paying restitution to your victims. So, I mean, it seems so contradictory, and I don't understand how the law makes room for those things to live concurrently, I guess. I wish you could explain that to me a little bit. Um, thank you so much. Love your show. Loved when you came to Seattle, and uh, we'll keep listening. Bye. So thanks for your great question, Victoria. And by the way, I enjoyed my visit to Seattle also. Really enthusiastic crowd. So this is one thing that Anne and I did not talk about, and you raised a good point. There's so many things that are inexplicable and seemingly contradictory with respect to the non-prosecution agreement that was reached back in 2007 in Florida. Uh, and I think you're right. It does not make sense in connection with logic that you can plead guilty for solicitation of prostitution and then also pay restitution to victims. It seems like a lot of people are saying that in the other direction, that the characterization of underage girls as prostitutes is offensive as well. So in either direction, the idea that they were actual victims who then are characterized as prostitutes or there's the characterization of the crime as prostitution and yet payment to victims for the restitution doesn't make a lot of sense and goes further, I think, to the point that we should get more answers from both the current Labor Secretary, Alex Acosta, Please wait. and others about the process and the thinking and the procedure. I know that they've looked at internally at the Justice Department, but there are a lot of things that are still unexplained that hopefully we'll get to the bottom of. By the way, there's one more thing that Dan and I didn't get to because it occurred after we taped this week, and that is the question of whether Attorney General Bill Barr should have any kind of involvement in the Epstein case. Now, the reporting has been that with respect to the ongoing litigation down south, about whether or not the non-prosecution agreement can be undone. With respect to that litigation, Bill Barr has recused himself. My understanding is of the theory that he was a law firm where one of his partners represented Jeffrey Epstein in the past. It has also been reported that Bill Barr has chosen not to recuse himself from the current proceeding, the current charges, now pending in the Southern District of New York. Two curious things about that. One is, I don't understand the distinction. I'm trying to figure out how it can be so that he recused in the one case and not recuse in the current case, because it remains true that a former partner of his at Crooklyn & Ellis once upon a time represented Jeffrey Epstein. So I don't understand the distinction. Maybe he should not have recused himself from the first matter, but once you do, I don't understand how it's consistent with not recusing yourself from the second matter. And then the second point, and the reporting as I've seen it, is that Bill Barr consulted with ethics officials and is not recusing himself from the SDNY matter. That, to me, doesn't answer the question of what the ethics officials at the Department of Justice actually told him. You'll recall, perhaps, from his confirmation hearing that he unequivocally said he would not necessarily follow the advice and counsel and direction of ethics officials at the Justice Department, that it was his prerogative to decide whether to recuse or not recuse in any particular matter, and he was not going to abdicate, in his words, that responsibility, even though his predecessor, Jeff Sessions, did commit to following the advice, not just consulting and listening to the advice, but following the advice of ethics officials on recusal, and then obviously famously recused from the Russia investigation. So I don't know what the ethics officials' advice has been, because I haven't seen that. How are you? I haven't seen Bill Barr say anything about it. Fantastic. Thanks for asking. Yeah, gorgeous. And that is whether or not the attorney general recuses or doesn't recuse from the SDNY matter. I don't see any reason why, in a case like this, he should have any involvement at all. At a minimum, he shouldn't have any involvement in the day-to-day operations of the investigation or the case or charging decisions. Yes, Jeffrey Epstein is a now notoriously well-known person who purports to be a billionaire, I guess, although nobody seems to be aware of how he made any of his money. But we handle cases in the Southern District all the time of greater consequence without any interference from or micromanagement from the attorney general. Certainly there were cases that had national significance and that affected many, many, many people, like the Toyota settlement and the GM settlement that involved billions of dollars in penalties. And on those matters, we consulted all the way up to the attorney general of the United States. So this is a case that's perfectly capable of being handled internally by Jeff Berman, the current United States attorney in the Southern District. There's no statutory requirement. They're friendly, but they bark, and they bark at each other. They won't hurt your dog, but I promise you they're not hurting your dog. But I will get her. They just bark at each other. Hey! I got her. I got her. I'm sorry about that. No, no. If I had saw her coming, we would have pulled. They just get excited. No, don't. It's not you. No, they're just... Come on, Laura. You got a leash. <laughs> and she's 15 years. Can you believe that? Yeah, 
Is she okay? Is she scared or is she? No, she would never bite her. Mark, give me a leash, please. Give me a leash, please. Oh, you can put her down. Put her down. Having taken the position over and over and over again, that there could be no citizenship 